This is the prelude clip before the main episode starts, letting you guys know what I did on the clip editing wise. As usual, mitigated the background noise. I did some value modifications. The only major uh, time I had to amplify the volume was when I talked to the two women at the end. You'll hear a few clips, clip ins and outs of me like cutting some stuff, but that's it. Besides that, this is the paradigm what we do here on the Seattle Side Show. Optimism is like one of the most frozen spots in all of Seattle, socializing wise. And I just defrost that freeze, y'all. Just we do it live and in the in the raw. So yeah. Letting you guys know. Peace. Alright, y'all, you know you already know what time it is. You know, this is Giovanni with the Seattle Side Show on Dog on Friday night in Seattle, Washington. Approximately, it just hit 8 o'clock or 2100 right here on the West Coast, y'all. But y'all know how Seattle is. They don't get nothing started until like at least a couple hours from now. <laughs> He's still in the house and all that. My, my homeboy Ben, and y'all know Ben from the last episode. He just messaged me, y'all. So when are y'all heading out? <laughs> you ready to party? But y'all, we about to, um, I'm about to, I'm about to start this night off with a question. And since I'm here in this setting right here at Optimism, I thought it'd be, uh, applicable. I'm too awkward with large groups. From Mongo Mongui. I realized my big problem whenever I go out to family reunions, house parties, and general social media. It's like here at Optimism. I can't find anyone in particular to chat with, and I'm too afraid to participate in conversations because I usually make a fool of myself. I have absolutely no trouble in front of audiences and presentations. I'm also very open on the internet. It's just meeting like the, it's just meeting like these where I feel small, vulnerable. Hanging out with people I know a big group is hard for me too. As I know, as they start socializing with other people I don't know, and I'm so afraid to join in too. Why? I wouldn't want to anchor myself to them either because I feel like they'd get irritated to my praise. So you got a scarcity social mindset? Uh. Irritated like that, like that one friend keeps talking and talking, just wanting to shut up. Yeah, I feel like that friend sometimes. So, I ask now, what would you do in my place? How do I train myself to socialize? I'm 23 years old, I usually stay at home. Uh, avoiding what I dislike in modern society, like hip hop, rap, Christmas, cheer, and joy. <clears throat> All right, so first, first thing, first, first, the first. Your mentality talking about, oh, you dislike modern society. I mean, I do too, but you sound like, you don't even sound like you're a, a, a social animal. So that that alone is going to uh, mess you up t- uh, too. Bro, there ain't no dog on such thing as, um, uh, I'm not going to say there's no such thing as an annoying friend, but I would rather, and I'll tell you this one right now, bro, I come here to optimism all the dog on time. I'd rather be around that annoying friend than the guy who doesn't talk at all because like, he doesn't resonate with nobody. And when you don't establish a presence, people don't link with you. And people don't link with you, you don't get a bigger social circle. You don't get a bigger, a bigger social circle. You don't um, fortify your social skills. Is that doggone simple? So you sitting here talking about, um, I'm afraid to be awkward. Hold on. Wow, y'all, y'all know Seattle's a nerdy city. They got free doggone magic cars just sitting by the paper plates. The hell. Capture sphere enchantment aura. Okay, but yeah, but yeah, um, it ain't no such thing. So let me give me give you an example. I'm right here at Optimism. It's like a big social hub. We got a huge group here. I'm talking. There's probably like a dozen people sitting at this table. We got like a group of four people right here. A huge group of people playing cards here. Like three females here. A group back there. A group back there. A group back there. Just this part of the room. I'm like 50, like 30 to 50 people at least right here on this part. We got some smaller tables, but still group A, group B, group C. And then you got a group and then another group. Like it ain't nothing but groups in here. What's your point? My point is right here on the podcast. When I do the Seattle side show, I can go to a random table. I could come to this table and talk to these people. I can come to this table and talk to these people. I can come to this table and talk to these people on this podcast. That's what I do. And to break through that social stigma, you got to be the one to initiate, especially if you if you know the people. It ain't that hard to just like go to a random person and just start talking some stuff. 
and just like talk like they don't they don't even have to be random but yeah, um, if you don't know them that well you just talk and you float and if you can read their faces and if you can tell that they aren't really having your company they don't really want to be bothered then uh you stop talking you go to the next person it ain't about no oh um what's his name I, I feel like i'm going to be awkward if i talk to a random stranger if you feel like you're going to be awkward talking to a random stranger that's going to be your whole dog on life you're never going to meet nobody new if you, if you got that scarcity mindset so let's say theoretically let's say theoretically I, c I come to this table over here these people are having a deep riveting conversation they don't know me by a, a can of paint and i'm just sitting here at this table what's up y'all uh don't mind me and so i'm just doing, i'm doing a podcast right and it's like people send What's me questions about? uh it's mainly about being social and stuff in seattle i try to break the seattle freeze kind of like here a guy just sent me uh he didn't send it to me but he posted on the social skills reddit he's like i'm afraid of large groups of people I'm afraid of being awkward if I talk to someone I don't know. So I'm talking to you now. You don't know me by anything. I don't know you by anything. But you're talking about being awkward. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but are you gonna like crucify me for like attempting to talk to you? Oh, of or? course not. No, yeah, no, man. No. Yeah, like see, see he's like, like he's, your yeah, hand. yeah. Thanks. This guy doesn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But see, I'm like, I'm right here. You could hear it live on the mic. This guy just told me he's like he's friendly. Now, I'm not saying everybody's going to be as friendly as this guy, but I just came up here and talked to him, and I wouldn't have known if he would have been friendly if I didn't try, right? <laughs> so, do you have some advice to, like, this random guy on the internet that's afraid to be more social and afraid of being awkward? Don't hold back. Don't Speak hold back. Speak your mind. Speak your mind. Be friendly. Okay. People are innately friendly. All right, man. Thanks. I appreciate it. And I'm the Seattle side show. You can look me up on Instagram or Tumblr or whatever, and that's the podcast. But All right, man. Thanks. No appreciate problem. it. But yeah, was that so doggone hard, bro? I just, I just went over there and I just did it. <laughs> Live on the dog on mic. It was like six people over there. They were, they were looking at me like, what's this dude? But I didn't care. I just went over there and I started talking. Does it doggone matter if I, if you come off of awkward? Worst case scenario, I would have just got my butt up and I would have walked away. Doesn't matter. Oh, but, she, but but I bet you wouldn't, Giovanni. I bet you wouldn't go to this another table. Yes, I bet you I would. I bet you I would sit right here. And I'm at another table right now. Showing him, and, and, and let's say I look to this guy to my right in his burgundy hoodie. What's up, bro? My name is Giovanni. I'm doing a podcast. I do, it's called the Seattle Side Show. Okay. And I try to like defrost the quote unquote Seattle freeze by randomly going to random people like this right now. Okay. And I just like spark up conversations with him. But I got a question from a guy. Yo, He's like, uh, I'm afraid of like large groups of people and being awkward and talking to people randomly. All right. So I'm doing this encounter with you as an example. I just talking to a random dude. So how are you taking this interaction right now? I gotta admit, at first it was a little weird, but uh -huh. you have a disarming personality about you, and it's actually coming off pretty casual now. Yeah, like yeah, that. exactly. And and you can't see him, but I'm reading his face, and he's like a chill. Like I I don't feel any hot stuff from him. He's not looking at me like oh get away from the table. Oh, no, no. no one at this table is looking at me like oh get away from this table. Okay, they look, they're a bit inquisitive, but they're not, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, <laughs> so what advice would you give this guy of shaking that fear of uh, talking to people he doesn't know? Uh, probably just be open and, and, and uh, yourself and I don't know, man, I'm not good at it. You seem to be a lot better at it than I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's cool, man. You got like a hump, you got like a welcoming aura to you yourself, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so what's your name? Uh, Aaron. Aaron, I'm Giovanni. Giovanni nice this is the you, Seattle man. Side Show. You can find the, the podcast on Instagram or Twitter or whatever. You can, like, there's one word, Seattle Side Show. But yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate you contributing. And don't want to disturb y'all's little diet. Peace. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. There you go. How many times? I, how many times I gotta get on here? Would you want me to go to another table? Are you just gonna Are you gonna sit up and get off your duck on butt and uh, start networking and improve your social life? Are you just gonna keep being uh, walk walk around your life being scared? Oh, uh, I don't have that uh, that mojo you got. What do you mean this mojo? I get I get tired of hearing that one. Like that guy's like, you know, you have a disarming personality, maybe. But I ain't wake up in in uh, <laughs> in 2018 with no disarming personality. I kept talking to people, and talking to people, and talking to people, and it came naturally. I was the dog on MMO nerd uh, before I got to this point. So what's your so what's your excuse for you not to be able to get up and do the same doggone thing? 
I could be, I could randomly sit down at this table as long as I'm not being rude or nothing and being a jerk and just sit here and like be like, what's up, gentlemen? How y'all doing today? Pretty good. You doing good? Yeah. I'm just doing a podcast. So. It's called the Seattle Side Show. I help like uh, people like social skills, so I try to defrost the Seattle freeze and all that. So I would, I'll typically do something like this. I'll just randomly sit down at the table, get see what the reaction is, and be like, "Hey, people, it's not." A lot of people here, are like, "Oh, you can't talk to strangers. They'll look at you crazy." This is Seattle. This is the freeze and blah blah blah. I'm like, no. How was so? Uh, how y'all enjoying y'all's night? Pretty good so far. Hasn't really started yet. <laughs> Pretty good so far. Hasn't started. Yeah, yeah we d- just got here. Yeah. Like, uh, minutes ago. Okay. Have you guys been to any other major cities, like nightlife wise? Not really. No. Okay. I, I hear that we start our nightlife a lot later than most cities. Cause so I hear in Boston, like about right now, the party's been going. Yeah. Wow. But I know Atlanta's that way too, but mm-hmm. I like the earring, by the way. It's like yeah, yeah. So like started like eight. Um, like later, like ten thirty. Here, yeah. Here. Yeah. Like, in Boston. Oh no, in Boston they start like. Six. That's crazy. Yeah, like six. Well, it makes more sense. <laughs> <laughs> True. It's easier. Well, which yeah. means easier? Yeah. Well, you gotta get up in the morning, right? <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Wait, why don't you gotta get up in the morning in Seattle? Well, who knows? Okay. You tell me. I don't live here. Oh, where you where you live? Not far. Oh, okay. Okay. Not far. All right. Is that y'all with that fragrance on? Who's y'all wearing a fragrance? I feel the fragrance like somebody's got something good on. It's incisive. All right, y'all, but I'm just, I was just, uh. Where, where are you from? I'm from Atlanta. Techn- well, I've kind of been ever, to be honest. I've been everywhere Atlanta, Charlotte, Cleveland, What's Alabama. Favorite place? Um, different aspects, but it depends on what you want. Like, I like Atlanta because you can feel the spirit. It's, it's bustly, but it's like so much going on. Charlotte's like more quaint, more. Small, you know, people just live in there like good, like a family vibe mixed with like a young vibe. There's a lot of people, it's, tra- all, it's almost all transplants there, kind of like here. And then, and then here, so it just here's a lot different, like socially. Like, that's why I've, if I wouldn't came here, I probably wouldn't start this podcast because the freeze almost makes me want to like just break it, just <laughs> break it down, you know what I'm saying? For real, man. Yeah, yeah, that's a real problem. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll say it my, myself, like, I have a serious problem talking to like anyone who's who I don't know or like I'm not interested I don't really know where that comes from but I imagine it's I mean a, it's common a, in a Seattle. thing of the people place talk about it. You know? yeah, yeah yeah exactly like it's, it's like a territorial thing yeah, interesting you mind like speaking on the mic on that real quick uh are oh, you down you good not, not really I'm all okay right. all right but yeah, like, but uh, I guess the only reason I'd ask is like it's interesting hearing that coming from you because like uh I don't I myself don't know where it stems from but I get, it sounds like you don't understand it either. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's just like a thing that just. Yeah, I mean it could be a thing like, to, like it could be a unique thing to me as well. It's not like everybody is no, nobody's the same, but I feel like I feel like a lot more people in this area are more susceptible to that type of personality okay. for sure. Yeah, yeah. Like more more recluse, more staying inside. Like mm-hmm. I mean, not many people want to go out in crappy weather a lot of times too. Interesting. So you saying you never get used to the weather then by that logic? What's that? So you never get used to the weather then? Uh, I wouldn't say you don't get used to it. I would say it's just easier to stay, easier to stay in, easier to like stay warm and like you. I mean, certain times of the year it gets pretty cold here. Like over in Ellensburg, especially like there was a week where it was two negative degrees, five, yeah. negative five. Yeah, negative, hit negative five. five. Yeah. Yeah. Washington last, State. Last yeah. year we had five feet of snow for two months straight. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. It gets fucked up over there. You don't leave your house. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not venturing. <laughs> there was a point where we didn't have weather stripping on our door at our <laughs> place, and uh, our house was almost in. I, I bet it was probably in the 50s, 40 degrees, like getting way down there because the outside was freezing already at that, at that point. And I didn't realize. I mean, I kind of knew that the door was leaking, but man, it makes a big it difference. It's crazy. It ain't no way in heck, bro. 
<laughs> but all right, gentlemen, it was uh, nice talking to y'all. Me too. Yeah, me I'm too. Giovanni with the Seattle Side Show. You can look right. me up on any social media platform for the most part. You put it, it's all one word, Seattle Side Show. But. All right. All, all right, right y'all. I, I, I got one question for you. Yeah. So you uh, work in social intelligence, like kind of, or like social, like your job is in. Technically, yeah. Kind of, so kind of like that. So what's um, what's like the. What's the first thing you would tell someone who struggles with like um, like social environments and like meet, meeting new people new and uh, like uh, meeting new people and all that? Yeah, just like icebreakers or like th- things like w- what's one thing that you would tell someone to give us like a like a tool that they could use in any given situation? To, like I, I actually somebody? yeah I actually answer that question like almost every day and like for the most part it's not really no secret like technique it's kind of like um i always say it's kind of like you just you gotta just put yourself in the ring girl like it sounds like a lot of people try to get a bit fancy with it like uh you know look at scout this this and this do this don't come off as this but when it comes down to it bro it's like almost anything any other skill like before i I got to this point where i'm this comfortable talking to people and everything i just did it over and over and over again and like naturally you learn and not only not only that like my the way i do it might not be the same way that you're comfortable like you might not want to just sit down at a Ram table and talk like for you it might be uh you know like for people that's already looking at you maybe then you might want to talk then you might want to like some people warm up slower some people warm up faster but the best way i can say it to you it's kind of like being in a boxing ring like you just go out and you do it over and over and over again you gotta fight that first fight sometime huh? yeah exactly yeah. And like you're, and you're gonna and when you get started just like in a real match you're gonna get knocked out and it's probably gonna hurt yeah. But then when you get up and you keep doing it, and you keep doing it, and you keep getting punched, you're either going to get used to getting punched or you're going to start actually dodging punches. And then you just get better. Same thing with social environment. You just do your thing. Just talk and talk and talk. Like even if you really uh, want to get better at it, I tell my uh, people all the time, like go to a random store. You can just be like in a clothing store. Just pick a, get like a shirt and just like go to the person next to you. Be like, hey, what do you think about... And just little stuff like that builds. I'm serious. Like just builds up your social prowess. <laughs> Because yeah. I did, I also worked in catering before this, so I got used to like every day we had to like serve hors d'oeuvres. So I had to learn like small talk rudiments. And I just learned that just initiating it, and you just learn the, everything that comes with it. Yeah, if you get a response, you get one, and if you don't, if like, you don't, you don't. You just keep moving. It's the same thing with like hitting on chicks. Like the guys tell me, oh, how do I deal with rejections? You want the rejections because the rejections are gonna make you stronger, and you're gonna learn from the rejections. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with uh people. But all right, man. Good luck to you. Like, all right. Thanks, yeah, bro. Yeah, man. For real. Appreciate it. Yeah. But yeah, y'all. I I don't need to um I don't need to get back on here and do this. Social rudiments, social skills, like that's the uh the least y'all can do is learn these rudiments. But uh Giovanni, ha, not everyone's uh at your level of aptitude of socialness. I y'all just heard me sit there and talk to homeboy. Hold on, y'all. I'm, I'm probably going to cut this. You probably won't hear this. The Seattle Side Show is having an intermission. But yeah, y'all. Oh, but Giovanni, like, uh, you you know a lot of guys that, that come on your podcast are struggling with women and dating and approaching chicks and this and this. Uh, we don't see you approaching no chicks. Huh. Y'all want to see. Y'all want to see that. Y'all going to get, uh, y'all don't want to see that game. <laughs> what do you mean by that, Giovanni? I mean, if y'all see, like, look, for one, I'm gonna be giving out, I'm gonna be giving out the secrets. And I don't know if I want to get that out, but now nah, I'm missing with y'all. I can go to a table, one of these tables, and uh, talk to one of these chicks. Y'all, some you do what to do is will it make it any different than if it's with uh, a group of females. Oh, you you talking? You talking to big dog Giovanni? But we don't see you uh, doing it. Ch. Y'all question Giovanni at the Seattle Side Show? The main dude putting y'all on these rudiments to the to the social scene that I can't do that. It ain't no it ain't no different. So I'm about to come over here. And I'm about to just stand at this table, you know, just chill. Hey, what's up, y'all? I don't mean to like intrude on a conversation or nothing, but uh so I do a podcast. And it's kind of like defrosting like the Seattle freeze, whatnot, like talking to random people, this, this, and this. So in your experience, 
what do you guys have any experience with like dealing with the Seattle freezer? Let's say like this encounter right here is like a random stranger dude with a microphone coming up to the table talking. Like how do you even? Oh, you know, oh, neither one of y'all know about the Seattle Freeze? No, no, no. I live here for a year, but I don't know what that is. Yeah, the Seattle Freeze? Minnesota. Oh, Minnesota. Oh, I hear Minnesota has a similar, like, uh, social feel to it, though. Oh, to okay. Seattle. So, but anyway. Okay, so the Seattle Freeze. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Thanks. Yeah. For offering me to sit down. But, okay, so the Seattle Freeze is like a phenomenon where, where what just happened right now is taboo. And almost never um, happens like a random stranger be like hey guys how are you doing this is nissy mind if i sit down like that i'm the only one that's the main reason i started this podcast was kind of like bring people in the city together but the seattle freeze is like essential let's say we kick it off I'm like oh nice to meet you like uh, whatever, uh, whatever your guys names are and then like a week later two weeks I'm like hey i'm having this party blah 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 and you guys either don't reply or like you just people say like it's really hard to uh, bring people into your social circle, but that's like the deeper layer. The first layer is like, they say that what I'm doing now is like impossible. Like, oh, people in Seattle, they're, they're standoffish, they're cold, they're clicky, they only hang out in groups. So they're I saying- I don't know if that's specific to Seattle though. Yeah. I feel like- I mean, Yeah, I exactly. Care about, I have a, or we have a friend, um, Zoe in New York, who she says like, New York, it's so hard to make friends. Cause like there's like, <laughs> so millions say- of people, but yet everyone's in their own little world. So you're saying that even in New York City, the same yeah. old thing. Or like, yeah, I mean, I've, I've only been in Minneapolis for the past four months or so, like working a new job and just like trying to make new friends. I feel like, yeah, I wouldn't approach the So you feel, so it's like the same phenomenon. So yeah, so in general, you think people are making too, uh, too big of a deal to Seattle Freeze? I, I, I don't know, I'm not sure. I graduated last year, so I wanted to first join. There's so many new grads. And then the beginning, it was more like a college freshman year, you know, everybody crazy making friends. At this point, yeah, after years, like, I'm not really able to make new friends anymore because there's enough cycle. Like, there's enough cycle. Okay. Probably you made your new friends through, like, co-workers, right? Versus, like, people just, like, don't approach random people. And I feel like some of that's, like, a safety concern, but some of it's, that, like, now everything's done, like, online or whatever. Safety concern. But actually, there's people I met, like, they're just random parties. But generally, people working in the industry. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's not a safety thing, but it's more like, <laughs> I feel like if guys approach me like like this, I would assume you, like, if you didn't have this, I'd be like, oh, here's some guy, like, hitting on us. So then it's like, that's oh, where the okay, so, from. Okay, so that's the... Because so, it's like, oh, we're having a girls' okay. night, like, we haven't seen each other in, like, six okay. months, and who's this dude, like... Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's, so, like, the, yeah. the phenomenon. I now, that's a whole nother level. Like, when you start talking about, like, the dating stuff, that's a whole nother layer to it. But, like, girls often will perceive guys... In that way. Yeah, well, of course, because you got it. For one, it takes a certain a man with a certain abundance mindset to even walk up a to a table. A yeah, or yeah, you gotta have the, the type of personality to even be able to do something. Like, you gotta have the abundance. You gotta have the whatever. So no guy like with his like looking awkward. Like he's not gonna come to the table and like sit down. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, I get what you're saying. I'm I'm not so exactly sure about the safety aspect, but like I understand like the whole. Oh, this guy's probably you know we're gonna question his. Yeah. Legend. Yeah, for sure. Uh huh. But that way, folks, that way of making new friends is really like making all friends, like new friends. It's like, you guys are like a friendly way of like making friends. It's like all my guy friends are all not friends. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like just like friendly meeting, like new guy friends do that way. It's not like super I feel like it's a mixed bag though, because that's true in terms of the guys, but then sometimes I worry more about the girls being like clicky or like, oh, they already have as many friends as they want to have. Whereas guys, that wouldn't cross my mind. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. I can and tell a guy, like, oh, let's go, like, throw around a frisbee. And then yeah. I'll be like, I already have a friend for that. <laughs> and, then, and then look, look. In 2018, the quote-unquote quote male friend is, a, like, the, the true male friend is, like, so rare. Yeah. Like, a guy that's actually, like, you know, I'm just going to be their friend. I'm just going to, like, but, like, that guy is rare because, like, most guys use, like, females in their social circle to leverage <laughs> other you know what i'm saying females don't typically i feel like y'all don't have to do that as much and so you can kind of but guys it's kind of like a thing where it's like uh if you don't have like a minimum amount of female friends like, oh man you need to it's a sausage party you need to get some females in your social circle so yeah yeah i mean i'm just being real but 
if y'all haven't picked up on that, I'm like, man, y'all must be kind of a little oblivious to the game. I'm just keeping it real with y'all. Right. Like, you can't feel that vibe from some of your male friends. Like, when they're hanging out with you and, and like, they're just being nice all the time and they never request anything back. You know they're just orbiting so they can possibly... They're just waiting in line. <laughs> they're just waiting in line for the opportunity. Y'all laughing? I'm serious. They're like, oh, okay, I'm going to, like, what's your name? Melissa. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm going to go to Melissa and just, you know, hang out with her. Like, oh, like, oh, she got a boyfriend? Man, like, that's probably the first thing. And this ain't no secret. You can get on the uh, Reddit for, like, dating advice. Dudes talk about this, like, almost every day. Like, it's this girl, one of my female friends. How do I initiate uh let her know i like her does she like me does she this is this, this and i'm not always answer their questions like does she even know y'all giving her that vibe like you can have like three male friends you don't even know like that's like every day that they guys. yeah every day that they like i do the opposite or like i'll like <laughs> pretend i'm interested in a dude and then just like friend zone him just to turn him into a friend like that's how i make it like, yeah friends yeah but to be honest with you in 2018 if a guy is like willingly going into the friend zone that's his fault you know what I'm saying? That's his fault. Because you should know, what at, especially at our age range, what the friend zone feels like and what the friend zone is like. You know what I'm saying? Like, with me personally, with my female friends, I have legitimate female friends. And then the ones that I, like, have interest in, I tell them, like, the second time I meet them. Like, I, like, I don't want to be just your friend. And, and they just, like, they either, like, respect it and be like, okay, I'm just going to do my own thing and whatever. Or we just like be for real, be more like you know. Whenever they're down the mood or whatever, and I'm down the mood, we may do something. But I let them know there. I don't play that fake. Oh, Melissa, come on, let's read some Harry Potter. And... I love Harry Potter. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, if I if I, if I invite you over to read like some um, Harry Potter, or, or you come over to like do like a, a slumber party type thing, I'm gonna pretend like I'm just I, I have strictly platonic interest when it's more there. Like I don't, I'm not down with that. Netflix and chill should be <laughs> Harry Potter. <laughs> Harry Potter and yeah. Like what's your house? Like oh I'm slithering, like what's yours? And just y'all like try to you know what I'm saying? It's off the chain. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Well, it was very nice meeting mm-hmm. you. Yes it was. What's the is this podcast like? Yes it is, yes it is. Um you can find it on Instagram, Seattle Side Show. <laughs> All one Side word. Okay. You can find it on we'll Tumblr. Well. Or Twitter. Cool. All right. Yeah, yeah. See you guys. Thanks for the insight and stuff. Yep. But yeah, y'all. Y'all heard it right there. I'm like, I'm, I'm so done uh, about being up in here telling all these rudiments. I'm about to get up out of here. It's like, I got like stuff to do with Ben. I don't have time to be in this one uh, spot. <laughs> oh, Giovanni, that's a. Uh, we we won't be able to sit down at no table. And do that with uh, them chicks. I bet y'all, if y'all, if y'all got the abundance dog on mindset, if you ain't got the dog on abundance mindset, you ain't gonna be able to do nothing. I don't care if you're trying to make friends, talk, be comfortable talking to some chicks, or whatever it is that y'all are trying to do. It's a dog on shame, y'all. They ain't take no dog on skin off my back to sit at that dog on table. And both them chicks turned out to be pretty dog on chill. <laughs> It did when they were done. They let it be known that they were done. That's it. <laughs> and they were having the doggone girls night out. I still got to I went up to that table and set my butt down. <laughs> so what's y'all's doggone excuse? I want to hear about that so um social uh, social sigma uh, craziness. Oh, we can't. Oh well, that that's awkward. No such thing as awkward if you're one of my doggone listeners. You seen Giovanni do it. Alright, so <clears throat> this part, I'm probably just like in this part here. I might make some snippets. I don't know what I'm gonna do when I start editing this. Um I'm about to head over to Tell. Go to the laboratory real quick. Okay, whatever. Yeah, to hell, I want to go to Belltown, y'all. So we about to do that. About to go to this Belltown, <clears throat> and we were on. Um, it's about to be on and popping. This is the prelude clip before the main episode starts, letting you guys know what I did on the clip, editing wise. As usual, mitigated the background noise. 
I did some value modifications. The only major uh, time I had to amplify the volume was when I talked to the two women at the end. You'll hear a few clips, clip ins and outs of me like cutting some stuff, but that's it. Besides that, this is the paradigm what we do here on the Seattle Side Show. Optimism is like one of the most frozen spots in all of Seattle, socializing wise. And I just defrost that freeze, y'all. Just we do it live and in the in the raw. So yeah. Letting you guys know. Peace.